Okay, Pisces, welcome to Catalyst Energies and welcome to your astrology forecast for the full moon in Cancer on January 17th, 2022. Welcome back, everyone, and welcome if you're new to this channel. My name is Dee. Thank you for joining me. I'm so grateful that you're here. And a special thank you to my patrons on Subscribestar. It really means a lot that you invest yourself and your resources into um, what I have to offer for all of us. So thank you very much. So Pisces rising, Pisces moon, Pisces sun. If your progressed ascendant is in Pisces, this is relevant. We're going to be looking at uh, to the areas of life that the full moon in Cancer and the surrounding transits are likely to impact uh, the Pisces person for this um, forecast. And you can check out the general astrology report for this week. It's going to be linked at the end of this video on YouTube. It's on BitChute. You just have to scroll down to find the second lunar quarter and the Cancer full moon for the 17th of January to get an overview of the whole week's astrology, um, which is the first quarter moon on the 9th um, leading up to this Cancer full moon. So Pisces, it kind of took me a minute to really uh, wrap my wrap myself around um, what I'm looking looking at here because you and yourself, you yourself are such, um, a nebulous person and, um, completely in the flow of the, the woo and uh, so often then, um, really find yourself immersed and, uh, inseparable sometimes with the feels of everything else around you, which makes you an incredible healer, an incredible empath. Um, a lot of times an incredible artist and just a compassionate and forgiving and loving human being just in general, but also to the downside, especially with Neptune, that's been in your first house for a long time is that, um, regardless of what you, you know, you may be immersed, but it depends on what you are immersed within in terms of a spiritual perspective, um, the potential for delusion and the potential for psychosis and the uh, potential for um, addiction and escapism um, are all part of the Pisces, especially Neptune and Pisces um, dynamic. So now that Jupiter is in your first house, Pisces, um, so you have a real advocate to come and help you manage yourself when, um, even though it's been a powerful time with Neptune, um, in your first house like this, it's, it's now the brother of Neptune or Poseidon coming in and managing and giving it some meaning, which is, um, just so well-timed because with this full moon, Pisces, you and I and everyone else, there's going to be a, a a fairly cathartic moment here with the sun and Pluto together at the full moon. Plus it's the position of the natal Pluto of the United States. So there'll be a Pluto return with the sun at a full moon in cancer, um, during this time. And so for the Pisces person, I mean, this is, a, a cycle long time coming Pisces where the social environment that you are in, that you realize your mission within that you are part of. So your associations, your larger like friend networks, your social media networks, um, your neighborhood, your city, um, the collective of people at a civilizational level, even, um, at a global level, all of this has been going through a transformational process now for Pisces for a while since Pluto has been in Capricorn. It's just now all coming to this culmination point of, of real power struggle and ultimate, ultimately, um, destruction along those lines of power of institutions and, and such that is going to illuminate very strongly for all of us, um, our sensitivity to our true emotional stability and where we have, um, situated it. And for the Pisces person, I mean, it's the realm of cancer where you find your most authentic expression and voice. The fifth house is about where our heart really starts pumping. It is about romance and dating and taking, taking social risks and gambling a little and, um, or not so much or, or a lot instead of a little, it really depends. The fifth house is where, um, we gather confidence, not emotionally, but in our, expression authentically and, and creatively. So we externalize our feelings into some sort of tr 
action or creative endeavor or pursuit in the fifth house. And, you know, our feelings are really developed in the fourth house, which is relevant for you in particular, Pisces, because Black Moon Lilith is square to your ruling planet at this full moon in the fourth house, the Cancer house. So there's some interesting connections and parallels here for the Pisces person. Ultimately, the destructive element that is the Sun and Pluto together at this full moon in the 11th house of the social organism as a whole that you're part of is going to, um, for the Pisces person, reflect a very strong and sensitive um, feeling and, and illumination within of, uh, where your, um, um, where your sensitivity is most, uh, secure when it comes to your creative expression and your voice and exteriorizing your voice. And when the collection or the pattern that you were a node within finally um, finds a cathartic release and it is no more. It's going to be the sensitivity and the energetic template of you as an authentic and sovereign being that is going to be left. And this is where we're all going to feel into. But for Pisces in particular, it is that aspect that exteriorizes their deep feelings um, and their sense of character. So, it's a return to nature in a lot of ways. And we have to, we're all going to see how much of nature we are returning to. And if it's the nature that we want to return to. So with the moon in the fifth house, just in general Pisces, I mean, you're going to, and the moon is very Pisces oriented, right? Neptune's obviously the ruler of Pisces, but the moon is very comfortable in Pisces and there's a strong connection here. So being able to exteriorize truly yourself as a Pisces person um, is even stronger longer, um, with the moon in the fifth house like this. So there may be aspects with black moon Lilith as she demands to be heard. She is primal. She is the original divine blueprint of the feminine. Um, she will be heard and she will make herself heard, um, regardless. And a lot of times we will suppress Lilith because it's very powerful and primal. And there is, um, there is such a deep power there that sometimes it overtakes us if we're not aware because it's deeper than even just ourselves. That has been our last bit of Gemini here. And the North Node has gone through your fourth house and Gemini now for the last 18 months. And so the areas of your emotional security, where you draw your personal power, where your feelings about yourself really develop in the fourth house, um, based on your family structure or your marriage or just your inner psychic life and the core of who you are, all those things have been a focus, um, for the Pisces person with the North node. And it's interesting that it is Gemini that is your fourth house, right? You yourself are just this expansive field of potential. And so you find your feelings and you feel into the power of who you are through an expansive field of ideas. Um, and so there's been a lot of focus on this, right? That you've really you've really rooted and stabilized yourself, Pisces, in research, in ideas, reading, writing. Um, it's through writing that maybe you've come to identify your feelings. Maybe it's through research that you've come to really um, identify where you feel like you belong. Um, maybe it's just through conversation and socialization. Either way, there's been a lot of focus here. And there's a, just this time, this, this last bit that Lilith represents that is so deep that really wants to come out in this realm that is going to challenge you as a person, especially this very humanitarian, very spiritual aspect of yourself, right? The Neptune that brings the collective spiritual experience right into your identity to the point where maybe there is no difference. Um, well, Lilith is a difference, right? Lilith is very much about, um, a different, a different, personality and a different identity entirely all part of the same thing but there is something like I said it's very primal and it's not about a large broad spectrum experience of surrender to what is this is a emergence in a very um, powerful and sometimes even violent um, way of 
ex exerting ourselves. And this is going to come out in the realm of ideas and conversation, but also in the realm of your own family, right? This Pisces, <laughs> this is going to come out and it may come out in a way that is going to challenge your conception of yourself as being like, I'm here for the collective's good as a Pisces, right? You just melt into everything around you. Excuse me. So when this comes up in your personal life, in your family, in your in your inner psychic realms, don't you know, it's OK. You don't want to necessarily squash it. Um, you want to be aware of it and just know that it's going to create friction here with this sense of self that has been um, developing with Neptune for years now in your first house. Now, and we'll we'll get into more of the Neptune aspect in a minute. Maybe if my mouse decides that it wants to work. Um, because also Jupiter is in your first house and you have this advocacy now in the realm of personal identity and subjective experience and persona that is now stepping in and helping you manage what otherwise is just this very nebulous, uh, very fluid, uh, magical and loving and compassionate. Now it's kind of standing in and have, okay, there's got to be some meaning here um, so that we can act on it and create from it and Pisces to create from yourself. And and so whatever's coming out here with Lilith in this fourth house is important. The friction here with your planetary ruler cannot be, um, I don't think cannot, I, cannot be overstated, right? It's, it's important that you lean into this because whatever's coming out here is going to um, also be kind of a parallel and certainly will give more information to you about this full moon in and of itself. Again, like I said, if the entire template that you are a node in is crumbling or goes through a metamorphosis or goes through a massive overhaul that just destroys it, um, you're going to want to know that you as a sovereign being externalizing the feelings um, about yourself through any kind of artistic aspect, right? That's the important thing to realize about it through your own feelings or through like poetry, right? And imagination. You want to know that that's going to hold you while um, there is a new social template that's around the corner that's about to start forming. But there's, there is a big challenge coming to you, um, Pisces, into um, your very nature. But um, uh, at least Jupiter is here. So Mercury and Saturn are in your 12th house. Uh, Mercury is going to be retrograde by the time we get to the 17th. But as of now, on the 11th, it's still direct. That means there's two sextiles in a week's time from Mercury to Chiron. One was already um, over the weekend when it was direct. And in... Mercury's retrograde, it's going to be also in a sextile to Chiron. So this Chiron wounding for Pisces, um, you know, the inner child, right? The shame and guilt about who we are, right? The, the, the imposed identities that are laid upon us that keep us from staying focused on who the potential of who we are based on our own um actions and and spark of divinity right chiron is like this smudge on the lens in some ways that keeps us from really seeing things clearly and um and with full concentrated attention into the crystal right um and for pisces it's been in the realm of your actual resources right every you know it's it's the crystal itself or the spark of life is truly your resource that you, that is your asset that is, um, within you as the subjective experience of all right as a Pisces. But, uh, you know, every time, you know, Chiron is like a trigger and pulls us back into these other like lesser and lower, uh, lower vibe identities that are based on fear and lack. And especially with Chiron in the second house, definitely like lack and, um, value not being valuable enough just in yourself. Right. Oh, that's a total Pisces thing. Right. It's so easy. It's so easy to just take on the feels of everything around you and everyone around you. And now with Chiron in the second house, it's so easy to feel, um, unworthy of the world around you because there's nothing there's it's very difficult I shouldn't say nothing it's just difficult for the Pisces person to not just like be a full-on empath sometimes so 
Mercury in the 12th house, I mean, the, the mental activity has been incredibly powerful. It's like a laser. And this laser in your 12th house, Pisces, which is a house of that you're really comfortable with because it's the house of endings and also the house of the woo, right? It's the house of the Pisces realm the ocean of consciousness, the, the mind has been very, um, focused and, and that laser focus of gnosis has been coming directly through the individual mind in the spiritual realm for you. And this can very much clear up and, um, help wipe away the smudge on the crystal in your second house of your resources, energetic resources, financial resources, your house, your job, um, your genetic resources, your ancestral lineage. Um, you know, DNA in itself is a physical material asset that you have as a human being, all of these things. Um, but the smudge on the lens keeps us from concentrating on the full potential of who we are based on lack and and guilt and shame so something in the realm of the spiritual something that is very anchored with saturn here actually and a very strong mental um clarity in in such a in a world that is or in an area of life that is very much about returning back to source can really help you um wipe wipe the lens and be able to concentrate that laser right into the crystal of who you actually have the potential to be and um, is going to help clear away a lot of the confusion and a lot of that guilt for just, um, you know, having self-worth and value, right? This is a big part of the second house. And Pisces, if you can do that, like there's no stopping you from like being, um, you know, being the empathic healer, um, magic person person that you really are, right? Incredible artists, um, healers, and empaths. So let's see what else here. Let's go back to, this is the full moon. So to get some context here, especially because there are a couple Neptune aspects that are um, very obvious during this cycle for all of us, but for Pisces in particular, one is the fact that Mars in your 10th house is then uh, in a square to Neptune. This was on the 10th. I'm recording this on the 11th. So on the 10th, Mars was in the square to Neptune. Mars in your 10th house, it's just acting on the ambition and it's very goal oriented oriented and is um, moving forward to in, in a crusade, but in a in, in your career house, Pisces. So whatever it is that you have, um, the mission that you have, I, you know, attached yourself to, right, your 10th house of career, mission, the zenith of your destiny, your professional life, you got Mars here in this professional and public persona that's like, hey, I, the output in this area in order to act on some sort of meaning. The thing is, is that this square to Neptune, again, can really just douse that fire um, of Sagittarius um, because, it, again, your personality, your very persona is inseparable from the spiritual and transcendental um, connection to everything else. And so when you try to like take any initiative in terms of um, your career, for instance, or the brick and mortar of reality that you are that, that is your community, um, and acting, acting on it. Um, you can see the tension here to this very, um, very powerful essence of your personality is going to really challenge. And in a lot of times douse that fire in that area. So there is tension. So you can take that tension and actually invest it and apply it into the sun, uh, in Capricorn in the 11th house. Um, you want to, I think you don't want to give up entirely on what's happening here. The sun in the in Capricorn is about power. And this power comes from a surrender to your spiritual essence. Uh, and when you do that, you can invest that into the power of being part of something and be imparting something where everybody works together to reach a certain goal. And there is real power in that. Um, and when it's coming from a surrender to um, not only the highest um, the highest source or surrender to the spirit, um, when it's for the Pisces person, it's surrendering just to who you are in connection to this. And absolutely, it will um, invest and activate a real sense of power and confidence in 
just the dynamic of working together, just because the social organism as a whole or the social setting as a whole is going through a major change and metamorphosis and arguably some destruction, we don't want to lose everything about what it means to work together. And for the Pisces person, it's very much part of the social setting as a whole to be cohesive at a material level. So but you want to be aligned with the highest spirit and the highest intention um, within yourself to invest into that. And, you know, Mars is important in the 10th house and oftentimes can really be a huge motivating factor and real energy to achieve something. But also, too, in this way, it's no match for the timelessness of who you are as a Pisces. And uh, it's, you can fake it till you make it when it comes to the 10th house um, or, and Sagittarius as well. Um, But it's no match for just what is in, that's already embedded in who you are. So that's, I think that that's, uh, that this is a tough one for everybody because we are also leaving Sagittarius in general with the South Node. And so Mars is our last push of social justice um, and meaning and acting on meaning um, as we, as it's getting closer to coming into Capricorn, which will be uh, really good because Mars loves to be in Capricorn. So even though there's destruction and catharsis and all that stuff here, it's laying the groundwork and fertilizing the soil for when Mars and Venus literally fertilize a new seed point in your social setting. So um, just keep that in mind as well. Let's see here. That is, we talked about Chiron. Yeah, Pisces, it's it's really just about trusting who you are, knowing that you have some advocacy now to help like manage you um, as a Pisces person and knowing that even though the social setting around you is about to go through this massive like cathartic moment, we're all going to go through it. The society as, as a whole or, or your social networks, your larger friend groups, your social media networks. And I would argue um, 11th house can be as wide as the, uh, as wide as the global community at this point. It's your ability to feel secure within your own creative expression, your own sovereignty that is really going to carry you through um, a month where there's just big change happening. So Pisces, the next time I will see you in this capacity is going to be um, at the Aquarian New Moon. Uh, at the very beginning of February, which will be in your 12th house. So Pisces, if you are interested in a reading or energy work to support your process, if you want to get more information about Subscribestar, if you want to just get more information in general, you can check out the links in the description box and you can stick around to the end of this video to get some more information, listen to a cool song and, um, Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so you know when I upload uh, more content. So Pisces, thank you so much. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, Take care of yourself. Take care of other people. Um, Have a blessed week. I'll see you on the next video um, whenever that is. And take care of yourself. Bye, Pisces. Mm -hmm.